scandal around Health Secretary Tom Price. We've learned he used government planes for two foreign trips. In addition to chartering private planes, now he says he'll reimburse the government. But not entirely. And in Puerto Rico, a change in leadership for military recovery efforts. The Homeland Security Chief heads there today as a flash flood warning could make a bad situation worse for millions of Americans. Good morning and welcome to Early Start. I'm Christine Romans. It's still tough to see those shots. And then I'm Dave Briggs. Friday, September 29th. It is 4 a.m. in the East. Up first, Tom Price facing even more scrutiny. New details emerge about his high costs, travel habits on the taxpayer's dime. In addition to chartering private jets for official business, the Secretary of Health and Human Services also traveled on government aircraft for two multi-stop international trips. Politico reporting those two trips alone cost more than a half a million dollars. Price already under scrutiny for chartering dozens of private planes insists all the flights were approved in advance. All of these trips uh, were official business, all of them were within budget, all of them were approved by the normal processes that every other administration has gone through prior to the trip, not after. President Trump is said to be fuming over the new revelations and all the negative press surrounding them. For his part, Secretary Price is vowing to personally reimburse taxpayers for the private charters, sort of. Here's CNN's Jeff Zeleny. Christine and Dave, Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price, even in hotter water than he was just earlier this week, a new revelation of more travel, this time foreign travel, spending some half a million dollars or so traveling to points across the world. Now, this is something he was already on uh, thin ice with the president. He agreed uh, late Thursday to reimburse the government for portions of his uh, travel on private jets. He said that he would send a check for some $52,000 for the price of his seat on some of these planes, but not the full cost of the aircraft. We caught up with Tom Price last night in Washington to ask him about his job security. This is what he said. The check that you're writing, will that uh, satisfy your bosses and the taxpayers' questions? Uh, I think what we've done right now is to, uh, uh, is to demonstrate good faith effort that we've heard the concern and the, and the uh, uh, criticism, um, and we look forward to the Inspector General's report. Do you plan to stay in the job? Absolutely. Now, again, he said absolutely he would hold on to his job, but that is not a decision for him to make. President Trump will decide whether Tom Price will remain in the cabinet, whether he will stay on board as one of his uh, more senior advisors. We do know by talking to people close to the White House, the president is increasingly losing patience with this ongoing story, this drip, drip, drip of new flights, new destinations here. So the president will have a decision to make whether he uh, decides to keep Tom Price on board. Tom Price not on good footing with the president. These stories certainly do not uh, give the White House confidence as they're trying to deal with so many other things from Puerto Rico, tax reform, and they're dealing with this, even more controversy from Tom Price. Christina, not, Dave. Not what they needed indeed. Jeff Zeleny, thanks. Now to clear a few things up, the use of military jets by cabinet officials needs a sign off from the White House. And that procedure began under President Obama. Usually requests come from officials who need to maintain secure communications though during flights. Since the inauguration, the White House authorized 77 government flights for cabinet officials. Compare that to the same time period in 2009 when the Obama administration approved 94 flights. So 77 for this administration, 94 for the Obama administration. Meantime, we're learning tensions are running high at the Department of Health and Human Services. A source tells CNN there's a, a witch hunt for leakers and people are hiring lawyers at their own expense. Reports this morning also say Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke and his aides have taken several flights on private or military aircraft, including flights to his home state of Montana and private flights between two Caribbean islands. Four cabinet members have now been found to be using non-commercial planes at taxpayer expense. CNN also learning exclusively that Jared Kushner did not disclose the use of his personal email account during a private interview with the Senate Intelligence Committee staff. It has now been revealed that the president's son-in-law and senior advisor used the account for official government business. The heads of the Intel Committee said to be so mad at Kushner's omission, they sent a letter telling him to double check that he's turned over every relevant document to the committee. Meantime, Politico reports the White House has launched an internal investigation of private email use, pulling batches of emails on the White House server to and from the private accounts of senior aides. CNN has not confirmed that Politico reporting.
Meanwhile, a flash flood warning in effect for Puerto Rico, threatening to compound the misery on this hurricane-battered island. Acting Homeland Security Secretary Elaine Duke travels to Puerto Rico today, where she'll meet with the governor and FEMA officials to discuss the response effort. Right now, the widespread confusion surrounding the delivery of life-saving supplies. According to the governor of Puerto Rico, there are 3,000 containers stuck in port, 3,000 of them. Some of them may not be related to hurricane relief. Earlier, CNN had been told by shipping officials as many as 10,000 containers were stuck. Either way, as you can see, distribution remains a critical issue. The Pentagon has just appointed Lieutenant Jeffrey Buchanan to lead all military efforts in Puerto Rico, trying to improve distribution networks of these relief supplies. Listen to the president's Homeland Security Advisor, Tom Bossert, when he was asked why it took so long to appoint Buchanan. Do you acknowledge it was a mistake, looking back, to not have this three-star general yeah. on the ground earlier? No, not at all. In fact, that doesn't affect it. the way we stage uh, equipment and the way we handle area command and field operational commands. Uh, this is textbook, and it's been done well. About 7,500 U.S. troops and 10,000 federal relief workers are on the ground in, in Puerto Rico. Right now, there are more than 10,000 people in 160 shelters in Puerto Rico. This island's power grid is not expected to come back fully for months. Ninety percent of the cell sites on the island are out of service. And according to Puerto Rico's governor, an airplane with cash will be arriving soon to ease pressure on banks running low on money. The U.S. Department of Transportation sending $40 million to help restore essential service on roads and bridges. Buses in San Juan resume limited service this morning with more routes expected to reopen next week. All right, there are still pockets of Puerto Rico which have yet to see FEMA or anyone else from the outside world. And that's forcing residents to take extreme measures for basic supplies. CNN senior international correspondent Ivan Watson has more from hard hit San Lorenzo. Dave and Christine, more than a week since Hurricane Maria ripped through this island, we're still seeing communities that have not gotten assistance from the outside world. And I traveled about 45 minutes by car to where the road ends in a dead end because the bridge to a small town called San Lorenzo was wiped out by flash floods after the hurricane and there we saw a stricken community that has no electricity, no running water, no telecommunications at all and access from that town to the outside world people are basically forced to ford a river with knee-high water uh, and then since they can't take their vehicles across, they basically have to walk to try to reach, for example, the nearest supermarket where they can try to buy food to then walk and bring back and carry across the river. So a very difficult situation for that community, which says it has gotten one visit from some FEMA representatives. It has gotten several visits from the municipal mayor, but it has not gotten any assistance whatsoever, the community says from the outside world no food no fuel though we during our visit we did see several military helicopters flying overhead they never stopped to help the people in that community some of whom have seen their houses completely destroyed roofs blown in walls blown down by the storm dave and christine Ivan Watson, thanks. The U.S. Virgin Islands still facing trouble as well. Two-thirds of the cell service on the island still knocked out. In oh. St. John, no cell service at all. This weekend, Royal Caribbean's Adventure of the Seas cruise ship will evacuate 1,000 residents from the three islands with medical needs, priority being given to high-risk pregnant women, the elderly, and those with illnesses or injuries requiring urgent care. I can't imagine what it would be like to be, ha have diabetes or be seven months pregnant or have any kind of have a child with special needs or have little children i mean yeah. it would be really really frightening and kudos to royal caribbean but certainly an odd dynamic when the private you know cruise shipping industry is doing the job of the government i know american airlines yesterday was had its first flight into and out of st thomas so that air, airport um presumably that went well i mean that airport is now open it has been open for for some yeah. time so that's part of the process as we've seen in puerto rico is getting the, the airport up and running. In Florida, the first FEMA trailers are arriving in Key West for Monroe County residents who lost their homes to Hurricane Irma. So far, FEMA officials have already approved 84 of the trailers for storm survivors. Irma pounded the region nearly three weeks ago, leaving the middle and lower keys badly damaged. The next goal for FEMA is to install the trailers on pads 
so they can become inhabitable as soon as they're hooked up to utilities. The EPA confirms the flooding from Hurricane Harvey caused a leak in one of Houston's most dangerous and vulnerable Superfund sites, oh, no. the San Jacinto Waste Pits. The protective cap on the site has been damaged, and samples show underlying waste material was exposed. The pits hold waste from a paper mill that's been deposited for decades. Test results from one of the 14 areas tests uncovered dioxins at more than 2,300 times the acceptable level. All right, the White House already defending its tax plan. The president calls it a middle-class miracle. Critics say the plan favors business and the rich, and some, some middle-class Americans may even pay a little more. Now, economic advisor Gary Cohn insists no tax package guarantees zero tax increases. Our tax plan is aimed at making sure we give middle-class Americans a tax cut. Remember, we have 50 states, we have counties, we have cities, we have long-term capital gains, we have short-term capital gains, we have all different types of structures in the tax code. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you could find someone in this country, maybe one person who their taxes may not go, go down. Our taxes, of course, are complicated. The plan lacks details. The tax writers on the committees will be able to fill in those details, so no telling yet how it benefits uh, the middle class. Uh, two things will benefit the middle class, and Gary Cohn made this point. A higher child tax credit and doubling the standard deduction. But all of the tax breaks gone, including for state and local taxes. Who uses that? Mainly middle class Americans in high, state, uh, high tax states like California, New York, New Jersey. So House Republicans from those states are already pushing back on, a, on, a, on this, worried that their constituents will pay more. And yesterday in that briefing at the podium, uh, Gary Cohn, he did say, look, I, uh, there could be a family uh, of four. Um, who make $100,000, you know, two incomes, they could see their taxes overall go down because of the child tax credit, because doubling of the standard deduction yeah. and the like. You know, most people don't file for all those deductions, you know, the deductions anyway. But there are others who've looked at this analysis and say if you have more than two kids, you live in a high tax state, you could see your, your, your taxes go up just a little bit. I think they're really trying to sell middle class tax reform here, but what Wall Street likes. Well, we don't have it yet. Ta right. Tax cuts for businesses. That's what they really care about. That's what this vehicle is for. Yeah, Gary Cohen had a tough time pushing back on the notion that the president's own personal tax bill won't go down dramatically, insisting a, that Americans don't care about we that. We have a great story on CNN Money about the four ways um, Donald Trump yeah. and his family will benefit from this tax plan. And the three letters, AMT. Mm -hmm. All right, players and fans making a statement at last night's Packers-Bears game at Lambeau. Did anyone take a knee to protest the president? CNN has learned exclusively that a Russian-linked social media campaign called Blacktivist used Facebook and Twitter in an apparent attempt to stoke racial tensions in the U.S. during the 2016 election. According to two sources with knowledge of the matter, both accounts regularly shared content intended to deepen the racial divide and stir up outrage. The Facebook account had 360,000 likes. That's more than the verified Black Lives Matter account on Facebook, which has just over 301,000 likes. The Blacktivist Twitter account has been handed over to Congress. The Facebook account expected to be turned over in the coming days. Former Utah Governor John Huntsman confirmed by the Senate as the next U.S. Ambassador to Russia. He previously served as the U.S. Ambassador to China under President Obama before running for the Republican presidential nomination in 2012. Huntsman has taken a much harder stance against Russia than the President has. During his confirmation hearing, Huntsman said there is, quote, no question Russia interfered in the 2016 U.S. election. Lawyers for the Trump administration demanding the private account information of thousands of Facebook users. CNN has learned search warrants specifically target the accounts of three Facebook users described as anti-administration activists. One of those users created a page where Inauguration Day protests were organized and discussed. That page was visited by an estimated 6,000 users. Information all those users could be accessed by the government if they get access to the three accounts they seek. The ACLU filed a motion to dismiss the warrants. So far, no comment from Facebook. All right, ahead, a congressman shot on a baseball field this spring returns to the People's House. When I was laying out on that ball field, the first thing I did once I was down and I couldn't move anymore is I just started to pray. Pretty much every one of those prayers was answered. Oh, did that Great feel to see him great. back. More of what Steve Scalise told his emotional colleagues next. A 
Friday, triumphant return to Capitol Hill for Congressman Steve Scalise. The House Republican whip was shot in June at a congressional baseball practice. On Thursday, he returned to the Hill for the first time since he was wounded. Scalise calls himself a living example that miracles really do happen. But that's why I'm so excited to be back, because as we're fighting through the issues of the day, let's just keep in mind that we rise above the challenges of the day and understand that it's not just us and our constituents and the, the country, the United States, that's counting on us being successful. People all around the world that believe in freedom are counting on us as well. Scalise is planning to resume his job at the Capitol while continuing outpatient Rehabilitation. Really wish him the best. He looked strong. Nice to see some unity yeah. on Capitol Hill. Another game, another statement by NFL players, not to mention the fans. No kneeling during the National Anthem Thursday. Instead, players and coach trying to make their voices heard. All right. Uh, actress Julia Louis-Dreyfus revealing she has breast cancer. Mm. The star of Veep and Seinfeld posting this message on Twitter. One in eight women get breast cancer today. I'm the one. Dreyfus also saying she has a supportive family and friends and fantastic insurance through her union. She made a plea for universal health care to help others facing a similar fight who don't have the protections that she does. The 56-year-old Emmy winner getting plenty of support from Hollywood, her Veep co-stars, and a real-life Veep, Joe Biden, who tweeted, We Veeps stick together. Jill and I and all of the Bidens are with you. Julia, wish her the best. I don't know if there's a funnier woman of our generation. I, I guess in my particular taste. I mean, she, she's, she's talented. outstanding. Yeah, she really is. Uh, everything she's done. All right, Health Secretary Tom Price facing growing scrutiny over his air travel, not only private jets, military flights overseas, and we're told the president is not pleased. Growing scandal around Health Secretary Tom Price, we've learned he used government planes for two foreign trips, in addition to chartering private planes, and now he says he'll reimburse the government, but not entirely. And in Puerto Rico, a change in leadership for military recovery efforts. The Homeland Security chief heads there today as a flash flood warning could make a situation even worse for millions of Americans. Oh, such a tough scene there in Puerto Rico. Welcome back to Early Start. I'm Dave Briggs. And I'm Christine Romans. It is about 31 minutes past the hour. Nice to see you all this morning. Up first, Tom Price facing even more scrutiny as new details emerge about his high-cost travel habits on the taxpayer's dime. Now, in, in addition to chartering private jets for official business, the Secretary of Health and Human Services also traveled on government aircraft, military air aircraft, for two multi-stop international trips. Politico reports those two trips alone cost more than a half a million dollars. Price, already under fire for chartering private planes, insists all the flights were approved in advance. All of these trips uh, were official business. All of them were within budget. All of them were approved by the normal processes that every other administration has gone through prior to the trip, not after. President Trump is said to be fuming over the new revelations and all the negative press. For his part, Secretary Price is vowing to personally reimburse taxpayers for the private charters. Sort of. Here's CNN's Jeff Zeleny. Christine and Dave, Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price, even in hotter water than he was just earlier this week, a new revelation of more travel, this time foreign travel, spending some half a million dollars or so traveling to points across the world. Now, this is something he was already on uh, thin ice with the president. He agreed uh, late Thursday to reimburse the government for portions of his uh, travel on private jets. He said that he would send a check for some $52,000 for the price of his seat on some of these planes, but not the full cost of the aircraft. We caught up with Tom Price last night in Washington to ask him about his job security. This is what he said. The check that you're writing, will that uh, satisfy your bosses and the taxpayers' questions? Uh, I think what we've done right now is to, uh, is to demonstrate good faith effort that we've heard the concern and the, and the uh, uh, criticism, uh, and we look forward to the Inspector General's report. Do you plan to stay in the job? Absolutely. Now, again, he said absolutely he would hold on to his job, but that is not a decision for him to make. 
President Trump will decide whether Tom Price will remain in the cabinet, whether he will stay on board as one of his uh, more senior advisors. We do know by talking to people close to the White House, the president is increasingly losing patience with this ongoing story, this drip, drip, drip of new flights, new destinations here. So the president will have a decision to make whether he uh, decides to keep Tom Price on board. Tom Price not on good footing with the president. These stories certainly do not uh, give the White House confidence as they're trying to deal with so many other things from Puerto Rico, tax reform, and they're dealing with this even more controversy from Tom Price. Christina, Dave. All right, those military flights that Jeff mentioned need a sign off from the White House. Charter flights are only subject to approval by HHS lawyers. Now, the military jet White House sign off procedure began under President Obama. Since the inauguration, the White House has authorized 77 government flights. Uh, military flights for cabinet officials. When you compare that to the same time period in 2009 under the Obama administration, it was 94 flights. So you do the math. Uh, the Obama administration approved 17 more of these than the Trump administration, just, just for some context. In the same time period, yeah. Meantime, we're learning tensions are running high at the Department of Health and Human Services. The source tells CNN there's a witch hunt for leakers and people are hiring lawyers at their own expense. Reports this morning also say Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke and his aides have taken several flights on private or military aircraft, including flights to his home state of Montana and private flights between two Caribbean islands. Four cabinet members have now been found to be using non-commercial planes at taxpayer expense. Very busy draining that swamp. Mm -hmm. All right, CNN is also learning exclusively that Jared Kushner did not disclose the use of his personal email account during a private interview with the Senate Intelligence Committee staff. It has now been revealed that the president's son-in-law and senior advisor used the account for official government business. The heads of the Intel Committee said to be so angry at Kushner's omission, they sent a letter telling him to double-check that he has turned over every relevant document to that committee. Meantime, Politico reporting the White House has launched an internal investigation of private email use, pulling batches of emails on the White House server to and from private accounts of senior aides. CNN has not confirmed that reporting. All right, to Puerto Rico now, a flash flood warning in effect there, threatening to compound the misery on the, on the island. Acting Homeland Security Secretary Elaine Duke travels to Puerto Rico today. She will meet with the governor and FEMA officials to discuss response efforts. There's widespread confusion surrounding uh, the delivery of life-saving supplies. According to the governor of Puerto Rico, there are 3,000 containers stuck in ports. Some may not be related to hurricane relief. Earlier, though, CNN had been told by shipping officials as many as 10,000 containers were stuck. Either way, distribution remains a critical issue. The Pentagon has just appointed uh, Lieutenant General Jeffrey Buchanan to lead all military relief efforts in Puerto Rico, trying to improve distribution networks of relief supplies. Listen to the president's Homeland Security Advisor, Tom Bossert, when he was asked why it took so long to appoint Buchanan. You acknowledge it was a mistake looking back to not have this three-star general on the ground earlier? No, not at all. In fact, that doesn't affect it. The way we stage uh, equipment and the way we handle area command and field operational commands, uh, this is textbook and it's been done well. About 7,500 U.S. troops and 10,000 federal relief workers are on the ground in Puerto Rico. Right now, there are over 10,000 people in 160 shelters. The island's power grid is not expected to come back fully online for months, 90% of the cell sites also out of service. According to Puerto Rico's governor, an airplane with cash will be arriving soon to ease pressure on banks running low on money. The U.S. Department of Transportation is sending $40 million to help restore essential services on roads and bridges. Buses in San Juan resume limited service this morning with more routes expected to reopen next week. Of course, one of the challenges is when you get the cash there, there's a shortage of, of uh, truck drivers, armored truck yep. drivers. So you get the cash there, now you gotta make sure that you have a system to fill up those cash machines. Distribution is critical. Desperation not limited to people on the island. There are also many folks trying to get home to, to Puerto Rico. CNN's Bryn Gingerass met up with one family traveling home for the first time since the storm. She has more on their emotional return. 
Christine and Dave, we met up with a couple, Carmen Delgado and her husband, Eduardo, for the past week. They've been trying to get to Puerto Rico. No idea uh, what their house looks like. They haven't seen their family. And their flights have been canceled three times. Finally, they got on a flight on a Thursday morning from Philadelphia to San Juan. They called it a miracle flight. And I could tell you, and it was an emotional one. We took it with them. At times, we watched Carmen look out the window. She cried uh, when we actually landed. And there was cheering in the entire cabin. Uh, and then when we actually got into the airport here in San Juan, it was just chaos. The couple was frantically searching for their two children who were meant to pick them up. But of course, communications here on the island are dismal at best, and they weren't able to connect. So what we did is we got in a car and we traveled about an hour outside of San Juan to Umacao. It's where they live. It's actually one of the first places Maria hit. And as we were really driving around, Carmen would look out the window and she says it looks like a fire tore through this area. And to be honest, it didn't get much better when we actually got to her house. She walked up the steps to her house. She was gasping for air. There was no ceiling. There were no walls. And at one point she turned to me and she said, I have to sit down. And this is a house that she lived in for 20 years with her entire family. And Maria just completely wiped it out. And remember, they hadn't seen their children. It was three weeks. And for an hour, we waited at that house, which seemed like a lifetime to them. And then finally, Carmen saw the car coming down the road and watched this emotional reunion. <laughs> And one thing Carmen told me after all of this was that I might not have a house, but I have a home, which means to her that she has her family back together again. And she used three words. We now pray, we wait, and we hope. And that is what they are doing in the near future until hopefully they can rebuild. Dave and Christine. All right, Bryn, thank you so much for that reporting. The president claims he will not benefit from his tax plan. Another real estate mogul, Don Peebles, told me it's great for the rich and that his tax cut will boost jobs. Most high income earners pay um, taxes and earn their income through pass through entities. And so this will be a tremendous tax cut, say from 39 percent down to uh, uh, 25 percent. And entrepreneurs tend to take most of their free capital and put it back in their businesses. So also killing the estate tax, killing the alternative minimum tax, lowering that top bracket. You say this is great for rich people. It is. It's great for entrepreneurs. I like um, the elimination of the estate tax because it allows us to orderly transfer wealth um, uh, that we work for to the next generation. Are you concerned at all about how we pay for it? Yeah, I think well, I think that's going to be a big fight, by the way, because um, the elimination of the deduction for state income taxes is going to be huge. And so you're going to have New York and California fighting tooth and nail because they're the two highest tax states in the country. So I think that's going to be a big issue. And you're already seeing the pushback from House Republicans in those states. They're yeah. like, no, 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 that's not good for us. Peoples also says the plan is particularly good for real estate uh, developers, but mm -hmm. he thinks it would be good for the economy overall. You know, the White House is trying to sell it as middle class miracle, middle class tax relief. People like Don Peoples look at this and they say, yeah, but this is about cutting taxes for corporations and about uh, juicing the economy. The, the death or estate tax is interesting because they're, they're saying this is really for the farmers in middle America. Well, is it? I mean, some farmers, yeah, but you've got a lot of those family farms have already been, they're corporate now at this point anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, you have fewer family farms than ever, um, than, than ever before in the Midwest. You know, it's for people who have five and a half million dollars or more uh, to pass on. So, um, you know, it, if, I, if I were trying to support it, I would sell it as family farmers right. too. There's a lot of fights ahead. All right, players and fans making a statement at last night's Packers-Bears game in Lambeau. Chance of... CNN has learned exclusively that a Russian-linked social media campaign called Blacktivist used Facebook and Twitter in an apparent attempt to stoke racial tensions in the U.S. during the 2016 election. According to two sources with knowledge of the matter, both accounts regularly shared content intended to deepen the racial divide and stir up outrage. The Facebook account had 360,000 likes. That's more than the verified Black Lives Matter account on Facebook, which had just over 301,000 likes. The Blacktivist Twitter account has been handed over to Congress. The Facebook account is expected to be turned over in the coming days.
Former Utah Governor John Huntsman confirmed by the Senate as the next U.S. Ambassador to Russia. He previously served as U.S. Ambassador to China under President Obama before running for Republican presidential nomination in 2012. Huntsman has taken a much harder stance against Russia than President Trump. During his confirmation hearing, Huntsman said there is, quote, no question Russia interfered in the 2016 U.S. election. It appears the leader of ISIS is still alive. Breaking 11 months of silence in a, a long audio recording, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi mocks the United States. He also calls on jihadis to rally against the Syrian regime, insists the terror group remains viable despite the loss of, of, of rapid loss of territory. Now, the speech seems to have been recorded recently since it references North Korea's nuclear threats against Japan. A national intelligence spokesman says the recording is being examined. Reports of his death have been premature again. Yeah, I think again. that was uh, the Russians had claimed, yeah. All right, Elon Musk wants to colonize Mars, and he just unveiled the next phase of his plan. Details on CNN Money Stream next. A triumphant return to Capitol Hill for Congressman Steve Scalise. The House Republican whip was shot in June at a congressional baseball practice. On Thursday, he returned to the Hill for the first time since he was wounded. Scalise calls himself a living example that miracles really do happen. But that's why I'm so excited to be back, because as we're fighting through the issues of the day, let's just keep in mind that we rise above the challenges of the day and understand that it's not just us and our constituents and the, the country, the United States, that's counting on us being successful. People all around the world that believe in freedom are counting on us as well. Scalise planning to resume his job at the Capitol while continuing outpatient rehabilitation. First Lady Melania Trump leading her first roundtable policy discussion, the issue, the opioid crisis in America. Mrs. Trump says she plans to use her platform to help children with the pressure they face growing up. Drug addiction, especially opioid abuse, is one of those issues and I look forward to working alongside the Presidential Opioid Commission and people such as uh, yourself to do all we can to teach children the dangerous consequences of drug abuse. Many of those invited to the event were directly affected by opioid abuse. Others who attended work in the drug recovery field. Another game, another statement by NFL players fans as well. No kneeling during the national anthem Thursday, instead during that anthem. Remind me patriotic again, crowd. but it's only recently that the teams have been out for the national anthem, right? 2009, they officially made this policy. Yeah, prior to then, teams wanted to focus on football. But it was part of an ad campaign. Room. Part of an ad campaign. The military, the military began to pay the NFL for patriotic salutes. It all goes back to a business deal. It'll continue this weekend. We'll see how it evolves Sunday. A second massive rock fall in two days at Yosemite National mm. Park. Officials say one person was injured in the fall Thursday on Yosemite's popular climbing destination, El Capitan. It happened along the same exact climbing route as Wednesday's rock fall, in which one person was killed and another injured. All the victims are said to be British tourists. This picture was taken by a climber who had just reached the top of El Capitan when the rocks broke loose below. Oh, jeez. Actress Julia Louis-Dreyfus revealing she has breast cancer. The star of Veep and Seinfeld posting this message on Twitter. One in eight women get breast cancer. Today, I'm the one. Dreyfus also saying she has a supportive family and friends. Fantastic insurance through her union, she said. And she made a plea for universal health care to help others facing a similar fight. The 56-year-old Emmy winner getting plenty of support from Hollywood, her Veep co-stars, and a real-life Veep, Joe Biden, who tweeted, we Veeps stick together, Jill and I, and all the Bidens are with you, Julia. All right, golf's President's Cup living up to its name. Former Presidents Obama, <clears throat> Clinton, and Bush appearing together for the opening ceremonies at Liberty National in New Jersey. It's the first time three ex-presidents ever attended the event. Their appearance follows a joint effort by the five living former presidents to support hurricane relief efforts. The U.S. <laughs> team opening a three and a half to one and a half point lead over the internationals after the first session. But you really could see that they really get along well and enjoy being together. They do. They all look rested too. Rested. There they are. <laughs> there they look are. tired. Yeah, they kind of do. All right. Uh, let's get a check on CNN Money Stream this morning. Global stock markets mostly higher. Uh, following uh, Wall Street, the S&P 500 
hit a record close. Thank tax reform. The White House tax plan will cut the corporate tax rate. Uh, one of the many business friendly proposals inside these numbers. Also, the economy grew at its fastest pace in two years in the second quarter. GDP revised uh, up to 3.1 percent. But the Commerce Department warns the third quarter could slow down because of the impact of Hurricane Irma and Harvey. Twitter suspended 200 Russia linked accounts, but one U.S. senator says it's not enough. Twitter met with the Senate Intelligence Community Committee yesterday. It is investigating Russia's meddling during the 2016 election. Twitter told them it mainly removed accounts connected to Russia-linked Facebook profiles. But ranking member Mark Warner says that response is inadequate on almost every level, calling the company's entire statement deeply disappointing. Elon Musk wants to colonize Mars, and he just unveiled the next phase of his plan. Musk says SpaceX aims to land two cargo ships on the red planet in 2022. The goal? place power, mining, and life support systems on the planet. That'll allow crews to start arriving in 2024. That's in just seven years from now. Musk admits the plan is aspirational. Would you sign up? <laughs> That's the understatement of the decade. Um, no chance. You? <laughs> no. No? no You're I'm, not the adventurous type? I'm not the adventurous type. We're too old. This is, this is adventurous enough right here for me. Indeed. I'm not too old. You might be too old. <laughs> All right, early to start. The